internal. I remember when I was in the India that I said to myself, why anyone would not want this experience of knowing thyself. Years later, I see that the spiritual path is the most practical. Many people would say the opposite. In fact, probably most of the world. What I'm saying was never taught in our school systems or by our families. We're human beings, but at times I would rename that to human doers. We are good at that. In fact, we are so good that we have to slow down and do nothing. We get bored. Take for instance the global shutdown. Most people got bored out of their minds. They couldn't handle the mind being bored. This is a major problem. I mean, a huge problem. We are like leaves blowing in the wind. Whatever comes our way, react to it. Our subconscious runs 95% of the show, while our conscious mind is about 5%. Unfortunately, we aren't even aware of this. You are the universe. You just don't know. You are stardust. Many scientists have confirmed this. Scientists know of the existence of a quantum field that exists beyond time and space. You are a part of this field, yet we are testing on the freeway of life. Going back to the spiritual path is the most practical. How would you like to live in the present moment? <coughs> How about never getting bored again? Yes, that takes time, but with practice and awareness it can happen. How would you like to live in the center of the hurricane? Humanity is living in the hurricane force winds of the mind and is getting battered by the wind. Did you know that infinite peace, happiness, kindness, love, and compassion lie inside of you? Humanity is chasing the carrot on the stick. We are always striving for a happiness. External happiness is short-lived. Ask any drug addict that brings a temporary high, yet they need a higher dose the next time around. Did you know that you are a master chemist? Each one of us is geniuses. Unfortunately, every single time you get angry or have negative, any, have negative emotions, your body is literally flooded with over 1,500 negative emotions. The Buddhists say that when you get angry, you are drinking your own poison. You think the other person will get hard, that you are the one. We live in such a state of mind where the human body, for billions of people, they can't shut down the faucet of adrenaline. At night time, billions of people can't shut down the mind and body. A billion dollar industry is built around it. A wise man puts his head on the pillow, smiles, and drifts off to sleep. An ignorant man will argue until all hell breaks loose. The wise man will have nothing to say but smile. He has nothing to prove. The sun in the sky just smiles. The universe just smiles. It has nothing to prove. Just think the entire universe exists inside of you. Yet it doesn't shout. Hey, look at me, dummy. At times I wish it would. Yet the universe is big and humble. At the same time, it is infinite power. It is quite a paradox. When I came back from India, I had this friend. Call him Jim. Jim had a brilliant mind. It was off the charts. He got a degree in math and physics. Note, I said math, not mathematics. I need a spell checker for that. Anyway, we once discussed seeing light inside. My all-time favorite poem is Brahmanan's Palace in the Sky. We have five external senses and five internal 
senses. We're literally hardwired to know thyself. My dear friend Jim thought we were crazy. Looking back, maybe we were. My brother John and I were learning how to have our feet on the ground and head in heaven. That is the definition of the word idiot. We are living our lives in darkness, yet we think we see clearly. When I was young and in India, I heard this incredible poem. There is a palace in the sky without any foundation. A blind man sees a light more beautiful than a million suns. A deaf man listens to the unstruck music. A lame man climbs the ladder and drinks the nectar and gets totally intoxicated. The poem goes on and on. The final clincher is the following. Only a wise man understands what I'm talking about. These aren't just some pretty words. The entire universe exists inside of your heart. Palace in the sky. O oh, seeker of truth, I have witnessed such a great one. A well suspended in the sky from which ambrosia ceaselessly flows. A lame person climbs to it without any ladder and drinks jugs of that nectar. Gongs, conches, and kettle, bark, kettle drums ring out without being played by anyone. The deaf hear them and become ecstatic. They lose track of body and mind. Up there is a palace without foundation, which is radiant with light. The blind seize it and are so overjoyed they can't stop talking about it. In that place, a person dies, yet continues to live and has strength without eating food. Brahmanan says that only a rare soul can understand his tale. Commentary I first heard this poem when I was 18 years old in India. It made a precious memory inside of me. There is a jewel inside that man can, mankind can discover. Only a wise man understands what I'm talking about.
I once had a grand teacher who said, you can take a horse to water and you can't make it drink, but you can put salt in his food. Hopefully these poems are the salt in your food. May you drink the waters of life within. Throughout time, masters have come and gone <coughs> and sprinkles a little salt along the way. You're getting thirsty. The jeweler and the thief. Well, let's continue with this incredible story. The dragons, when they first saw the youngsters entering the cave many moons ago, weren't interested in the slightest betraying man. You see, man was one of their major troubles. There's even a dragon slayer profession in the British Isles. Yet, at that same time, they could see the potential in these youngsters. As a matter of fact, they were more evolved than them when they were young. Back then, the dragons didn't even have like a liver of life. So, at the eternal discussion among themselves, do you think they can train them? Do you think they can even in China and Tibet, war ruled the land. Anger was the norm. Mind you, these youngsters had a combination of light and darkness. They could see both sides of the coin. So the tech dragons decided to train them. Now their tra training wasn't like today. Today, children in school are bored. They are taught to use just memory. They are taught to remember facts. They are not taught to use your mind and think. The dragons are experts in this field. They are the master wizards of Hogwarts today. In fact, they are thousands of years ahead in development. Hogwarts teachers would be the nursery dragons would have an advanced <coughs> PhD study in the universe. They were off the charts. The dragons had a unique style of teaching. You could say it was revolutionary today. They taught by using games, play, and fireside chats. The first game they taught was hide and seek. This was a very practical game. They had a series of talks about the universe. They were taught that the universe existed inside of them. Well, to be frank, that was completely over their heads. They couldn't even understand one word. So the dragons played a game of hide and seek. The dragons would hide. The youngsters closed their eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here we come. They would open their eyes, and all the dragons were gone. The dragons had rules they couldn't see for ten. All the kids were completely shocked when they opened their eyes. All the dragons disappeared. They all passed in surprise. As you know, dragons are quite large. They weigh thousands of pounds. This game went on for around six months or so. Finally, at one fireside chat, the dragons told this practical story. A 
not mad. Two young men walking down the road. They were headed to a town five days from their current destination. One of their men was a jeweler. The other man was a thief. The thief knew this man had a very precious jewel that he was carrying. As I said, both of them were going to the same town. They decided to travel together. They had a long journey ahead of them. Hours passed. They were quite tired and exhausted. Fortunately, there was a simple end ahead of them. They both decided to spend the night there and share a room together. Both of them decided to have dinner together. The jeweler went first. While the jeweler was hiding, was holding the table for him, the thief was looking all over for the precious jewel. He was quite dumbfounded. He was the greatest thief in the land. They had dinner and went to bed in the end. They weren't in the mood to drink the hell and party into the night. Well, guess what? This went on for several days. Um, they reached their destination. By then, the thief was totally confused. He thought, this is going to be an easy sell. He said to the jeweler, I'm a thief. As a matter of fact, I'm a king of the thieves. I knew you were carrying a precious jewel. Every night, I knew you hit. Every night, I knew you carried a precious jewel. I knew you hid the jewel inside of the room. Every night I would search all over for it. I got quite frustrated when I couldn't find it. Where did you put it? I'm dying for an answer. The jeweler said, I knew you were a thief. I knew you wanted to steal the jewel. Every night I would hide it in a place and you would never look. The thief said, and where is that? The jeweler said, under your own pillow. The thief knew he was outwitted and outsmarted. Well, the kids loved this story. They were well acquainted with thieves and jewelers. They went through their towns quite frequently. The dragon said, let's play a game of hide and seek again. This time, focus on your breath. Close your eyes. To their amazement, the dragons appeared inside of them. They couldn't believe it. How could all the dragons appear to them inside of their being? This was the starting point of their incredible adventures. Now when they played hide and seek, they knew where to look. A single but necessary step took place. They knew it was both an inward and outward journey. The youngsters were thrilled. Each time they played the game, the youngsters knew where to look. They loved to play this game. All the first-time students had to go through the same baby steps that others went through. You see, this path is two steps forward and one step backwards. You learn from your progress and your mistakes. Never give up. Planting the seeds. The dragons have a master plan. They know you need a solid foundation to build one. Baby steps are needed on this journey. At first, the youngsters had to learn how to focus inside, meditate. If they didn't learn that at even a simple level, the youngsters would pay all attention to the outside world. This is why they had to play high and seek over and over again. 
Mexico became a habit. It became second nature. They learned over time that God and the universe exist within them. What another game the dragons used was Peekaboo. The dragons had their own style to this game. Children closed their eyes and say, Peekaboo! And the dragons would instantaneously appear inside of them. <laughs> the children would laugh so hard each time they did this. They never got tired of it. Even when they got older, they still got a big kick out of this game. This taught the child that the dragon world exists within. You are never alone. This helped the child in daily life. You see, their life was rough. Most of them never had the opportunity to go to school. Even at a young age, they had to work in the field. It was tough and demanding. The dragons understood the law of the universe. They understood that the kids learned that if you plant a seed in the ground, there is a process. A seed doesn't grow overnight. The crop must be tender to. You must pull your weeds. If you don't, the weeds will overtake your precious crop. You had to toil the soil and water it. It took a tremendous amount of energy. Well, the kids had no problem understanding those principles. The dragons then explained you have an inner garden that must be attended to. You must pull your inner weeds of anger, more greed, hate, and intolerance. You must learn how to pull the weeds of bone. You see, this was a major problem in China and Tibet. It still is rampant in the West. The dragons were probably the best psychologists in the world. They understood the mind to such a great extent. They truly knew the ways to develop a healthy and positive mind. They understood that the universe is kind. The universe is patient. The universe is love and compassion. The universe is tolerant. You see, you are the universe. You just don't know it. The youngsters never heard of such a thing. They're only used to see war, victory, and anger. Sure, at times they experience a little happiness, but they never knew that they could change their emotional state. They didn't have to be angry to bully other people around. The kids learned how to truly, truly transform themselves. The dragons taught them how to hesitate before they speak. They taught them to be conscious of what they spoke. They were taught, if something is negative, don't say it. They understood was placing more wood on the fire. The dragons knew about bullying. Remember, they were bullied all throughout their lives. Remember, that was one reason they left. There was this little innocent girl named Pima. Pima's name means lotus. She was like, like a lotus, very pure. Because she was pure and innocent, the boys loved to taunt her and bully her. She constantly had to endure this. The dragons were quite aware of her pain. Anyway, to make a long story short, they came up with a master plan. The next time the boys tried to bully her, the dragons would come to her rescue and roar. I mean, roar. It could be heard all over the valley. The bullies would run away in fear. Bima was so kind in nature, she would console the bullies and they would become best of friends. One by one, the bullies were transformed. They became students with the dragons and were transformed. It's kind of funny 
that modern day psychologists don't didn't embrace positive mental health until the 1980s. They only taught about the elements of the mind. The East has been teaching and learning for thousands of years. There was even, even a rumor that Buddha learned from the dragons. He got his learning from the inner dimension. Buddha was considered the first psychologist of his time. He understood the mechanics of the mind, which is still in play today. Stop the noise in your head. As the children began to learn how to meditate, they saw how powerful the mind is. They never noticed that before. They asked the dragon, how to stop the noise in my head? Of course, all the dragons laughed. They laughed because everyone goes through them. You see, the mind is the most difficult thing to control in the universe. The majority of man reacts to every situation. Man is reactive. The wise man learns to be proactive. They understand the basic law. It's my will alone. I set my mind in hope. Now, that's very easy to say. But hard to do. All people who learn how to meditate in the beginning have this problem. In the East, they call it monkey mind. The monkey goes from one branch to another. It can't be controlled. Well, when they first started to learn how to meditate, they clearly saw this from first hand experience. The dragon told a wonderful story. The subject was brought up. They told the story where a man saves the gene. Nobody knows exactly how this man saved him. Well, the genie told this man, you can have as many wishes as you want. The man said, Wow, that's incredible. I love that idea. The genie said, Well, there's a cat. The man said, what's that? You must always give one wish after another. If you don't, I will chop your head off with the sword. Are you sure you want to continue with this? The man hesitates for a moment and says, reluctant, sure. Well, the genie said, what's your first wish? The man gives one wish after another. It seems like when one wish is granted, he has to give another. He didn't even have one opportunity to enjoy, even for a second, the previous wish. He was getting tired. 
and he couldn't even go to sleep. And Jerry he was always harassing him and saying, what's your next wish? Well, fortunately, there was a wise man nearby. He went to the wise man and sincerely asked for help. This bone was turning into a curse. The wise man whispered into his ear. Well, the genie demanded another wish, or he would chop off his head. The young man said, Go to the forest and find the huge log. Your wish is my command. In a second, he returned with the huge log. The genie said with a smile, smile, Give me a wish, I will chop off your head. As you can see, the genie wasn't particularly nice. So the young man told the genie to go up and down the pole. When I leave, I will give you another command. The young man could relax and enjoy all the wishes he gave to the genie. The genie knew he was outsmarted by this wise man. The young boy enjoyed his life and helped others in the community. He eventually learned about the dragon and helped tremendously his fellow man. The dragon said that the genie is the mind. The mind wants to control you versus the other way around. By placing your mind on your breath, the genie will go up and down the log and set you free. Meditation is the key to bring awareness to your mind. The mind is either your friend or foe. Everyone in the universe has to learn how to control the mind. The frog in the well. You are the universe. You just don't know it. This is the central theme of the dragons. They reached the growth of awareness where they became the sun, moon, and stars. And were walking around in dragon bodies. They realized they were eternal. They were beyond time and space. The dragons also knew that humans had the same capability. They were curious about that. The dragons knew that man came from the stars. They were stardust. Yet the village around them and Tibet and China at that time had no idea of who they truly are. The dragons were once in the same state of awareness as the humans. They were angry. Faithful, glory, and full of grief. Yet over time, they realized their potential. They needed a story that could reflect how large they felt, yet how small in reality they lived in. So, there goes the story. Once upon a time, a frog lived in a well. This frog thought he was a know-it-all. Frog, the water in my well is the largest in the world. This was in fact quite a large well. The village is music for the community. Anyway, this frog bragged a lot and told all the people who were strangers to the well how fast the water is in the well. One day, a stranger came who lived near the ocean. The frog came up to the stranger and said, The water in my well is far grander than any water in the well. In the world, the stranger said, Well, according to my experience, the water in your well is probably one of the smallest I've ever seen. Well, a fight can see infused with the war of words. It was going out there. Both sides were putting wood on the fire. Family, they both calmed down. All the villagers came and wondered what was going on. It was quite the scene. Well, the 
villagers and frogs that the man. Can you prove it? Can you show us a place where water is larger than our well? So to make a long story short, a small group of villagers and the frog traveled to the ocean. They couldn't believe what they saw. An endless body of water everywhere. They were dumbfounded. Never in their world did they see such a precious sight. The stranger laughed and said, Now, this is a large body of water. The villagers and frogs couldn't agree more. Their well wasn't even a drop of water compared to the ocean. The dragons told this story to the youngsters. They reminded the kids of playing hide and seek and peekaboo. The dragon's word appeared to them inside. Well, the dragon said, this is the frog in the web. This is the starting point in your incredible journey of life. Inside of you lies the infinite ocean of love. You have the potential to tap into this. In fact, you are this ocean. This is your true nature. You should see how wide open were the eyes open from the children. They were completely mesmerized by this story. They weren't were just some mumble jumble words. The dragons were talking about their own personal experience. They were telling the kids that you could ultimately have the same experience. It's a moment by moment conscious journey. Baby steps are taken along the way. Signposts are all around. Can you imagine signposts all around? But do we have eyes to see? Nature is alive and communicating with each other. But we have cell phones in our hands. Magic is all around us, but we can't see it. Imagine the mysteries of life are all around us, but we don't see them. This is the journey of walking from darkness to light. We think we have all the answers, and yet we are living in darkness. If we think we are living in the light, then why have we been fighting for thousands of years? Why do we have guns and violence? Why do we have 45 billion years? We have more money than half the population. This is a journey we are walking on. Kids, you have a say in this matter. The torch someday will be passed to you. Someday you will lead the way. Take a look at the sun in the sky. It just shines. It has nothing to prove. Its rays keep the entire earth alive. Now, that's true magic. It's not a sleight of hand. It's not some magic tricks that appear real, but it's not. It's the real deal. Every step you take over time, you can start to see the signposts are all around you. You begin to see the majesty of the geese and ducks flying to the air. You will love to hear the geese honking in the sky. It will bring a chill down your back. You begin to learn to sit on a park bench and only take the beauty that surrounds you. You can close your eyes and tap in to the of nature. Nature is alive. Now though, not getting bored. You don't need to have your cell phone with you 24 hours a day. Yes, you can still have your cell phone, but it will be different. Imagine 
looking into your friend's eyes and seeing yourself. Whoever you may encounter, you see a reflection of yourself. How can you harm anyone in that state? There is no more flaming posts on the enemy. No more bullying. No more sexual harassment. This would be a thing of the past. How about no more school shootings? No more wars? No more guns and violence? No more crime? If you think this can happen, then think again. Your civilization is only 50,000 years old. There are worlds out there that have existed before the universe was born. They had to take small baby steps along the way. Ultimately, some succeeded and they could go out and help others on this journey of life. Help is on the way, yet you have to ask for it. You see, you have free will. That's the law of the universe. The universe is playing a hide and seek game with you. This is the game of life. This is the greatest game ever played. It will go on for eternity. So you are a piece of the puzzle. Your piece is super important. Imagine having billions of pieces of the puzzle put together. Yet there's a missing piece. It's yours. Will the puzzle be complete? Now one is missing and it's yours. You can begin to learn how to be a global citizen of the universe. You can learn how to be kind. You can learn how to have love and compassion for your fellow man. You can learn how to have patience and tolerance. You will once again discover the laws of the universe exist inside of you. You will start pulling all the negative weeds from your garden inside. And you can do this. Yours isn't the first one, nor are you the last one to walk from darkness to light. You see, you aren't alone. How would you like to feel that there's a great coach inside of you? You can actually feel it. It's so familiar. It's a part of you. How about a part of you that's already the universe? And a part of you lives in this world. You have the potential to realize this on a daily basis. In the early 1950s, Roger Bannister read, ran a sub-minute, sub-four-minute mile. Nobody thought it was possible. Months later, the barrier was broken, and even some high schoolers did this. You have the same potential. There is a precious jewel that lies within you. Millions of people awaken up from their slumber. Signpost is all around. Just open up your eyes. The story continues. Fellow Wizard's Advice This is a story within a story. We all love Harry Potter. Harry was a simple boy 
but he was an incredible wizard. Somehow, he knew how to go inside and tap into the miracles of life. But did you know, you have the same capabilities. Not turning that stone into a pig, but you can transform yourself from darkness into light. You are a mixture of the two. You can consciously, day by day, become more aware. This story begins in the fourth grade. One day, Ricky, a young boy, wakes up, and he is so excited to be alive, yet his mind is at peace. He has never felt anything quite like this before. For some reason, he is consciously aware of the rhythm of his breath. His breath goes up and down. For some unknown reason, he begins to follow his breath moment by moment. He is astonished by what has happened. The more he is aware of the breath, he notices that something behind his breath is keeping him alive. Over time, he realizes that the entire universe is alive. When he places his mind upon the breath, he feels such a bliss, such a love and compassion for all. He tells his twin brother John about this, and he begins to do the same thing. <clears throat> Over time, he experiences the same unity behind his breath. Mind you, this is the 1950s. It would be considered very odd back then, and probably odd now. Yet, it was simple. No religion or dogma. It's just you are focusing on your breath. You could call it meditation, but people have such weird connotations for the word meditation. For now, with this God focusing and going inward, a few of their friends notices the changes in them. Both twins, both twins are sort of reluctant to tell them what has happened. Some of them wanted to know more, while the majority could care less. For those who stuck with it, they notice the mind is a very powerful thing. You can't quite control it. It is said the mind is the most powerful thing in the universe to control. But over time, by focusing on your breath, the mind slowly gets tamed. It's like taming a dragon that's inside of you. Over time, the dragon becomes your closest friend. Before you ever started focusing on your breath, you had no idea on how powerful the mind is. Slowly, I mean slowly, one discovers that they came from the stars. All these children knew that they were stardust. You can't quite pinpoint it, but their intuition was coming alive. These children knew that the universe was kind, the universe was full of love and compassion. The universe was patient and tolerant. You see, behind your breath lies the precious jewel of the universe. They also learned how to weed and <coughs> garden within. Somehow, by focusing on their breath, they realized they had negative weeds inside of them. Yet they knew they could pull these negative weeds and plant seeds of goodness. These seeds are the universal laws that created the universe and all of creation. Laws like kindness, happiness, compassion, patience, and on and on and on. These precious laws are a natural state of being. Mankind wears tinted glasses. You can't see the signposts that is all around. Now listen carefully for all the children who have gathered around the campfire. You are the universe. You just don't know it. But you can. With your free will, you can make a conscious decision to discover the jewel within. The kicker is that you can do it and be like the sun and just shine. You don't have to convince or prove it to anybody. Anybody can watch their breath. 
months, yes, it takes practice. It took me about a month to ride a bicycle. My brother just got on one and rode away into the night. Everything you learn took practice. Even learning how to crawl and taking your first steps, there was a learning curve. I know it sounds so simple. It is. This is the greatest hide and seek game ever. The universe hides inside of you. Yet you've been told to look outside, not inside of yourself. For thousands of years, man has been looking outside. And what has it accomplished? War and tragedy on earth? If each one of you would put effort into discovering your true nature, this world would change. You see, heaven on earth begins with you. You are the key player. You have an incredible part in the play of life. You are the main character. Your incredible journey is to go from darkness into light. You are the Harry Potter of today. Inside of you lies the great mystery school. The universe is a grand teacher. The more you are in harmony with it, the more wisdom comes your way. You see, darkness can never know the light. Darkness is the absence of light. Go into a dark room. Flip the switch. The light appears while the darkness disappears. Darkness and light can't be together. Your true nature is the light. Darkness has, has been on this land forever so long. And Donnie the man is coming. There's a glorious sunrise taking place. Millions of people are waking up from their slumber. These are simple tools to use. Remember, if your words are going to put gasoline on the fire, don't say it. Our president needs to hear this. Hesitate for just a second before speaking. If you do, over time, you will master what comes out of your mouth. Words of kindness, compassion, patience, and tolerance will be your spoken word. It's not easy, but you can do it. You are a grand wizard, yet you need practice. These are simple guidelines you can take. We are all in the same boat on this journey of life. We either sink or swim together. Harry would be proud if his message of mastering yourself became the norm. He got bullied a lot, yet didn't take revenge. He was innocent and had a heart of gold. He had nothing to prove. Take this to heart. You are incredible. You have infinite talents. You are eternal. You will never die. Your body will, yet your soul will live forever. You will discover your true nature. How would you like to be like the sun, the moon, and the stars, and still be walking around in a human body? You would just laugh and love life. You would be like the sun. You would simply shine. In that state, you have nothing to prove or convince anybody. Wizard's Handbook. If there is a wizard's handbook, what would it say? You might be fortunate to open the book, and it will be empty, not a chapter in sight. Yet does that mean the joke is on you? Maybe by having no words in the book, the book is telling you something. You can describe truth, but is it true? You can describe a mango, but is it a mango? Only by eating a mango will you understand what a mango is. You are the universe. You just don't know it would be the central key. Yet by opening the book, it is blank. Where are all the pages? Where are all the chapters? Where is the table of contents? 
software of the index. I'm sure if I hand you your little book, you might want to tear it up and throw it on the ground. Who do you think you are? This book is rubbish. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. Yet, the words are there. Yet, you can't see them. The chapters are there. The table of contents is there. The index is there. What's the problem? You see, only the time the heart can see. If you come with a huge ink of paper and see, I know all the pages. I know it all. The pages will be blank. As you start on this journey and go inside, this book will slowly reveal to you its precious essence. This book is about your story. It's about your journey of life. It's extremely precious. You are known throughout the universe. Yet, to see the words, they appear slowly in your reading. At first, you may have glimpses of the words. Have you ever stared at a page in a book when the words fade in and fade out? Well, this precious book does the same. It's like this book reflects yourself. The more aware you become, the book reflects back to you. It now knows all about your journey in life. It knows your emotional state. If you are angry, the book has nothing to say. It doesn't respond to anger. It doesn't even know what anger is. Remember, the light doesn't know about darkness. Even if the light said to darkness, show yourself, darkness couldn't do it. The simpler you are in nature, the more the book will reveal itself. And that's why as children, you can learn so quickly and drop your old ways. These old ways were taught by your family, friends, society, and the world at large. You see, common sense is uncommon. The world doesn't believe in the book of knowledge. Even if they could open the book, they would see empty pages. Did you know that you are guided inside? Your wisdom will never harm you or others. Remember, if you ever have any negative thoughts, don't act on them. The universe will never ask for you to prove yourself. The universe is kind. Any negative thought you have is a weed that you can simply pull and never have it return. Yes, you must pull your weeds constantly. This is a given. You must water the soil and take care of your precious garden. You can show the book to others, yet they won't see anything, but you will. You see, the book is quite intelligent and knows who is looking at it. They will look at empty pages while you will see such wisdom. You see, this is how the book of life works. It's hidden and full of mystery. Only the young at heart can see. Only the children with pure intentions can read and understand the contents of this book. This book lies within you and knows all about you. It, it contains all the journeys you have ever partaken in. Literally trillions of years and beyond. It's like a time capsule. It knows the past, present, and the future. This book is priceless. No amount of money can buy this book, yet it's free. But I say there's a catch. Only the innocent can see. The book knows your state of mind. You can't trick it or force it to reveal itself to you. Many people think I, that I can outwit this book. Let's say you are 90 years old and you think you can't outwit the universe. Good luck. That's why cunning and trying to get your point of view across will never work. This book is as old as time. It has seen every sort of way to how people try to manipulate the book. And the book just laughs and has nothing to say. You see, the book doesn't judge you. It won't condemn you. It won't criticize you. The book loves you. Yet only 
by slowly understanding your true nature will the book slowly reveal itself to you. It has been this way ever since the dawning of man across the universe. This is the way. Only by being aware of the universe will the book reveal itself. Many people don't think this is real. Many people think that it's a fairy tale. Yet where do the fairy tales come from? There are many tales of where we come from. Some are true and some are false. Yet there is truth behind these tales. Something happened and it became a fairy tale. Truth is stranger than fiction. We live in a world where we have forgot our true nature of where we came from. Even if you don't believe in reincarnation, who were you before your grandmother was born? You see, you are eternal. You can never die. Your body will. This ancient book knows who you truly are. I hope these are words of wisdom. I hope you will get excited to you know this book lies inside of your heart. Wherever you go, the book goes. You see the book and you are one and the same. There is no difference. Yes, this is an incredible journey. You are a piece of the puzzle. The book inside is your true nature. It's your true essence. Nobody can take that away. It's up to you to open the book and walk on this incredible journey. You see, the spiritual life is the most practical life. You see, the journey is both an external and an internal journey. Good luck on your journey. Remember, you are never alone. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight, it's between two wolves. One is evil, he is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute, but then asked his grandfather, Which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, The one you feed. Little Ricky loved ethnic foods. He was brought up since he was born to eat ethnic foods. He absolutely loved them. Yet, he never knew how to cook them. One day in high school, he enrolled in a cooking class. He wanted to learn how to cook. To his amazement, he learned that there was cooking recipes that you can follow to make each dish. A recipe usually has a list of ingredients along with the actual step-by-steps needed to make the dish. He was so excited. From that precious course, he learned, he took, he learned hundreds of recipes throughout the years. He took the same concept to his own personal life. He learned how to use spices like kindness and patience in his life. He would sprinkle these on his daily actions. He knew that life was an incredible adventure. 
he added these precious spices to his everyday affairs. Ponder this over. What spices can you use to enhance your life? Kindness, tolerance, patience, love, and compassion. These are incredible spices that the world loves. Learn how to avoid the spice of anger, being a bully and fighting. These never are good in the end. They are old habits from the past. When I was young, I heard a story about three blind men touching an elephant. Each man touched a different part of the elephant. One touched the elephant's ear, another touched his feet, while the last touched the tusk. They began to discuss their experience and a huge fight began. I'm right and you're wrong. I know all the answers. You're a fool to believe in that. What a child you are. Yet, they all had their own individual experience. It was a piece of the puzzle. Not the puzzle itself, but a piece. Are we like the blind man touching the elephant? My religion is better than your religion. I'm going to heaven while you're going to hell. I'm going to declare war on you. I'm going to convert you. Religion has a piece of the puzzle. It is not the puzzle itself. Each religion is different and unique. The essence is the same. Which part of the elephant did you touch? Maybe it's about time to be open to something new. Your enemy is talking about the same thing you are. He just has a different piece a different point of view. In the end, the essence is the same. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? What if we had an actual mirror? that exists inside of us. Wouldn't that be an incredible fairy tale? Now what if I told you that you are the universe? You just don't know it. How's that for a fairy tale? You see, your mirror is dusty. Throughout your life, nobody told you that this mirror exists inside of you. Well, let the fairy tale begin. You can start learning how to clean your precious mirror. You can start by being kind in each and every moment. The more you are kind, the more you will clean your mirror. Learn how to meditate and enjoy the silence inside of you. At first, you may get bored, but the more you practice, the more you are clearing your mirror. Remember, this is play, not work. Cleaning your mirror is like removing huge boulders that you carry around. They weigh you down. Each time you remove a boulder, you get lighter and lighter. You see, you are your own Prince Charming. You have the capability to remove all obstacles inside of you. Now that's a fairy tale. Ponder this over. You are the universe. You just don't know it. This is a beautiful fable by Hans Christian Andersen. It's a beautiful summer day. The sun shines warmly on the old house near a river. Behind the house, a mother duck 
the sitting on 10 eggs to chick. One by one, all the eggs break open. All except one. This one is the biggest egg of all. Mother duck sits and sits on the big egg. At last it breaks open. The chick, the chick. Out and jumps, jumps. The last baby duck. It looks big and strong. It is gray and ugly. The next day, mother duck takes all her little ducks to the water. She jumps into it. All her baby ducks jump in. The big ugly duckling jumps in too. They all swim and play together. The ugly duckling swims better than all the other ducklings. Quack quack! Come with me to the farmyard, says mother duck to her baby ducks, and they all follow her there. The farmyard is very noisy. The poor duckling is so unhappy there. The hens pick him. The roosters fly at him. The ducks bite him. The farmer kicks him. Alas, one day he runs away. He comes to a river. He sees many beautiful big birds swimming there. Their feathers are so white. Their necks so long. Their wings so pretty. The little duckling looks and looks at them. He wants to be with them. He wants to stay and watch them. He knows they are swans. Oh, how he wants to be beautiful like them. Now it is winter. Everything is white with snow. The river is covered with ice. The ugly duckling is very cold and unhappy. Spring comes once again. The sun shines warmly. Everything is fresh and green. One morning, the ugly duckling sees the beautiful swans again. He knows them. He wants so much to swim with them in the river, but he is afraid of them. He wants to die, so he runs into the river. He looks into the water. There, in the water, he sees a beautiful swan. It is he. He is no more an ugly duckling. He is a beautiful white swan. We are all swans. We just don't have the eyes to see. Look inside of your heart. You will see your true nature. The wind and the sun were disputing which was stronger. Suddenly, they saw a traveler coming down the road, and the son said, I see a way to decide our dispute. Whatever of us can cause the traveler to take off his cloak should be regarded as the stronger. You begin. So the sun retired behind a cloud, and the wind began to blow him as hard as it could upon the traveler. But the harder he blew, the more closely the traveler wrapped his cloak around him, till at last the wind had to give up in despair. Then the sun came out and shone, shone, shined in all its glory upon the traveler, who soon found it too hard, too hot to walk with his cloak on. Kindness affects more than Severity. Once upon a time, a wise man was having a conversation with the sun. He told the sun that darkness did not like him. He felt that the sun ruined everything for him. Darkness loves to keep everyone in a state of ignorance. Darkness loves to see humanity bickering and fighting with one another. The sun just loved to shine and give love, kindness, and compassion to all. Well, the sun said to the wise man, 
bring darkness to me, and we can have a wonderful conversation. The wise man said, I will bring him to you tomorrow, while the sun waited and waited. The next day, darkness never came. He waited for over a month. Darkness never showed up. You see, darkness is only the absence of light. The sun is always shining, so darkness can never appear. Discover the light inside of you. That is your true nature. The following day, I packed up my bags and took a train to Premnagar. Maraji's ashram is near Hardwar. It's a small town in the foothills of Himalaya. The next two weeks, I listened to discourses about this knowledge. Something inside of me knew that it was to receive the experience of a lifetime. I knew the door to my soul was to be opened. Words are hard to express the feeling that was going inside of my being. I knew that in a short time I'd be shown and would reveal the secret of life itself. I knew this experience was real. I told a lot of people who had the experience I could tell and sense that something wonderful was going on. I liked it, the idea that the proof is in the pudding. I didn't want to join a cold or religious group. I just wanted a direct and continuous experience of the power that's keeping me alive. I knew through practice this could be achieved. During this time, the war between India and Pakistan was going on. Each night there were air raid sirens going on and off in the distance we could hear bombs going off. There was a general blackout at night. Pakistani bombers were only miles away. Air raid sirens were heard in the distance. At that ocean, the whole place was so serene while this part of the world people were dying. Trains of Pakistanis were being massacred going from India to Pakistan, and trainloads of Indians were being massacred going from Pakistan into India. Such a dichotomy. I'll never forget my initiation. There were probably about 20 of us in a small room. Muraji had initiators who revealed his knowledge. We were in the room while Muraji was playing on top of the roof directly overhead of us. This experience that I had that day still sends shivers of joy, just merely the thought. The first technique the initiator revealed was the light technique. I always knew that the human being had the ability to see the light in the side. This is an actual experience. When the initiator touched my forehead, I felt this incredible surge of energy. I knew at that point that something incredible was going to happen. My whole body and soul sensed it, sensed it. My consciousness completely left its physical existence. A golden circle of light appeared. Inside of this circle, a brilliant blue star appeared. This golden circle of light and this blue star was so beautiful. It's probably the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Waves of love, joy, and peace were surging inside my consciousness. All of a sudden, the store transferred into a ray, a tunnel of blue light which went on for infinity. I merged with the blue ray. It's very hard to describe this experience. I was at home. The doors were open. I was given the keys and it was up to me to cultivate that experience. I have definite proof that we are more than these bodies. All of a sudden, the mystery of life was revealed. I knew the secrets behind our religion. There was, there was a genuine experience that could be shown and experienced. Years later, I realized that this experience was initiation into Lord's Michael Blue Ray. It was the Jacob's Ladder. This experience was the ladder to God. To this day, I'll never forget this experience. It gave me practical proof that God exists. I knew it, but this was a practical experience is more real than any outside human experience. I knew my life was on track. I waited years to go home. I was shown such a glorious place. When I returned to this body and regained physical consciousness, my whole body was shaking like a dot. My body had a hard time. 
Can you imagine being hooked up to the power plant of the whole universe? I knew no damage was done. Over time, I knew that the body was built and designed to handle these kinds of currents. Day by day, through meditation, man can slowly harmonize with these frequencies. Frequencies began to vibrate at this frequency. There were three other techniques that were revealed. One was the music technique. I was shown how to listen to the innermost frequencies of life. Since God is energy, man has the capability to be in tune and listen to subtle yet energy frequencies. Different religions have different concepts about this experience. By listening to this music over time, man is filled with such a joy and peace in his life. The mind slowly begins to slow down. In this state, man gets in contact with an energy frequency that is infinite. This energy is pure love and bliss. The whole universe is comprised of this energy. It was, is, and will always be. This is the Word of God. Every major religion talks about the Word in some form or another. This is a very simple technique where man can be in direct communication with the subtle energy. When a person first receives this initiation, the Word is very subtle. The majority of people really don't understand the power of this Word. I know a lot of people who took this experience and never really tried it out. Over time, I can consciously put myself in direct communication with this word. My whole being is instantly filled with such a wave of love and bliss. I'm out there 24 hours a day, but I know it's possible. I have had experiences that I was completely taken out of this physical world and taken into a place where there's no time and space. The only thing that existed was this incredible energy of love. I know I was at home with my father. This energy exists throughout all creation. It exists in the manifest and unmanifest. It exists throughout time and space and beyond. All of creation came from this word. In the Bible in St. John, the verse goes like this. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Human beings have the capability to tune it into this experience. The last experience was one of the living waters or nectar experience. When man, when man is in this experience, powerful hormones and enzymes are secreted through the endocrine system. Through the ages, man has learned that he has a capability to actually experience this nectar or living water. Just one drop of this is an incredible, powerful experience. One drop has the capability to take man consciousness into a definite, altered state. This fluid is very cleansing to the body. When Christ was in the desert for 40 days and nights, he lived off his, this mana. This experience is energy in its subtle form. It is energy, yet it transmutes, transmutes itself into matter. This experience is very powerful to the endocrine system. I've had numerous experiences with this nectar. It's probably the most intoxicating drug known in the universe. Unlike a drug which has side effects, this experience is completely beneficial to the body and soul. These experiences reveal over time who we truly are. We are more than our mind or body. We are in fact the source of life. Each one of us are part of this universal consciousness. We just don't remember it. It's amazing when we were born, we came from the source. Our whole body was this consciousness. Over time, we forgot. Years later, we have completely forgot of our true existence. After the, the initiation, I thank my Creator for revealing Himself to me. My dreams come true. I have the tools. Everything made sense to me. I could read the scriptures and understand the hidden meaning. The scriptures were, the, were at the same wavelength. I had a lot of respect for the major religions. The following day, I was sit sitting by the Ganges meditating when I completely lost consciousness of this planet. 
I saw a light more brilliant than the noonday sun. My consciousness was flowing into a river of nectar. I felt the whole Ganges River was flowing through me. Maraji had a beautiful poem by Rumi, a great Sufi teacher, that sums it up. It goes like this. There is a palace in the sky without any foundation. A blind man sees a light more brilliant than a million suns. A deaf man listens to the unstruck music. A lame man climbs up a well and drinks the nectar and becomes totally intoxicated. The clincher is only a wise man understands what I'm talking about. From then on, my life was to change drastically. After my initiation and this experience, my life was never the same. I was shown something so incredible that my focus was on this experience. My whole life from then on was based upon practically cultivating this experience. Day by day, I was going deeper and deeper into my existence. My days in India were spent in meditation and spending time with Mirage. Meditation was such an, an incredible experience. I call it going to the movies. Day by day, I was going deeper and deeper into a realm that I'd never been before. Pramnagar was such a beautiful place. I was thousands of miles away from home, and then again, I was truly at home. I was content and full of such an incredible bliss. My mind was learning to focus on something inside of me that never changes, that was and will always be. I was learning how to be connected to that experience 24 hours a day. I practiced meditation like how I surf with joy and the thrill of riding the waves of life. To this day, I'm still blown away that this experience is lying dormant inside of humanity, just waiting to be discovered. We are searching for the jewel, and the jewel is hidden inside of each one of us. Over time, it's not all bliss and roses with the experience. I had to face my mind. The mind is such a powerful thing. It can be your friend or enemy. I learned over time to become its friend. In the beginning, at times, I thought I would go crazy. The mind was constantly chattering. I would sit for hours, and at times I wanted to get up and just forget the whole thing. But then I would break through. Then that experience would rush in and completely saturate your being. You are bliss. I felt that I had to break down the door. Over time, I walked through the door and my mind, my mind hasn't bothered me in this way saying. I'm not saying my mind doesn't bother me, at times it does. But when I close my eyes or put my connection on this word of God, my whole being is filled with bliss. In the beginning, it took tremendous effort to have this kind of experience. In the beginning, you meditate on the experience. Years later, that experience meditates on you. I remember that a few days before Christmas, the whole ashram took a train ride from hard work of Patna, a city in Bihar, India. Bihar is one of the far states in India. The scenery was beautiful. We were traveling on this old, funky Indian train. We could see swamps that were full of lotus flowers. Wildlife was everywhere. Raj was having a three-day program. I remember at the festival, there was probably a million people there. At one point in the festival, the Ari Samaj attacked the festival. I'm not sure how many people died. The group caused a lot of trouble in India. It was kind of scary to, to sit on stage watching fighting only a half mile away. India was quite a different place. The people were quite friendly. They liked Westerners. The Indian people in general had a strong conviction for God. Before leaving, to be hard, my friend Peter left to go back to America. I loaned him the money, which I got back in South Africa. The Westerners left in January. There were only a few of us left. I spent my remaining time in Delhi. I remember I would meditate and go into town. The Indian food was great. I bumped into the son of James R. Nance. His father was a famous actor in Hollywood. He played in Gunsmoke on TV. He had a son, Ralph at the time who was a world champion surfer. It was quite funny meeting him. I was buying a kilo of cashews for one dollar. I just started talking to him. During this time, Raji was planning to go to South Africa. 
he, he needed a few Westerners to go and help set up the necessary arrangements. Somehow, Maraji's mother asked me to go. So in early February, we embarked to Bombay. One early morning, I was meditating using Mahu's technique. I felt such joy and happiness. All of a sudden, I felt this incredible power. I saw this incredible clover at my root chakra. This clover was slowly rising up my spine. The energy was incredible. It was so real. I became a little afraid due to the power and the clover. I knew I would not be harmed at all. I controlled my fear and let the experience grow. The cobra went all the way to my third eye, which is the pituitary gland. At each step of the way, I would have a different experience. I've always heard about the Kundalini experience, but this is the first time I had experience to see it. The Vedas talk about this experience. The cobra was so real. It was like you had to face your greatest fears, and then and only then could you be taken to a different level of consciousness. It's amazing this experience exists inside of our own being, and yet it is dormant. We are so involved in this world that we simply are unaware of a greater reality. I learned that the scriptures of the past were based upon practical experience. We are simply convoluted the meaning of the experience and came up with a different meaning altogether. Is this from a mystic or a scientist? Kabir, a mystic from the 15th century, said the following, All know that the drop merges into the ocean, but few know that the ocean merges into the drop. <laughs> now that is profound. A modern day Einstein might have said that today. The entire universe exists inside of us. We are a part of the universe. Is this a paradox? We are beyond time and space. There are billions of universes. <clears throat> Inside of our DNA is a part that is not material. It is spiritual. No instrument known to man can detect this yet. Yet the mystics have said all along, you are hardwired for this experience. Ponder this message. The divine words from Kabir are alive. Curious means eager to know or learn something. <clears throat> I've been curious all my life. My mom and dad taught me adventures at ethnic food at such a young age. It still continues today. That curious nature never goes away. In fact, it actually increases the more you get older. I remember <coughs> that you can't rest on your laurels. In the 90s, I built a dome automation for the observatory on Maui. I didn't know C++ here. <coughs> I was extremely curious and knew I could pull this off. When I finished it, I thought they might give me a few days off. Nope, it was on a Friday. I was back to work on a Monday. It was a huge accomplishment. My curiosity was one thing that got me to learn how to meditate. I read books on the mystics and wanted to know what they were talking about. It seemed like a foreign language. So I persevered and was curious about this adventure. It was love at first sight. I had a knack for this. Yes, nobody gets a free ride, but I had a knack for this meditation. It came easy to me. I think we need to approach life like a curious child. 
never lose that. If you do, plant the seed in your heart and water it daily. Your curiosity will grow. The definition of adventure is the following. Engage in hazardous and exciting activity, especially the exploration of unknown territory. I remember as a kid, I took a yoga class. At that time, yoga was relatively unknown in America. Yoga was around during the late 1800s, yet the majority of the population thought it was on the fringe. It was definitely on an unknown territory. This love for adventure took me all over the world. With a surfboard in my hand, a backpack on my back, and a yearning to discover my true nature, I was off. I had quite the adventure. I learned the greatest adventure lied inside. This is truly unknown territory. You can live anywhere and have a simple life, but by exploring your true nature, is the adventure of a lifetime. Lock a person up and put them in solitary confinement and see what happens. The greatest adventure is to tame your mind. That is probably the most difficult thing to do. Mystics have been talking about this for thousands of years. Today, yoga is mainstream. Millions of people practice it. Maybe, maybe something is going on. We are slowly learning more about life. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. Now let's take a look at this with a rational mind. In the beginning was the Word. Before time and space was the Word. That means way before humans existed on Earth. Even before the Earth was created, there was the Word of God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Is there a primordial frequency, one of energy, that is God? Is God a multi-dimensional energy? This energy is beyond time and space. This energy created the universe and the Word was made flesh. This energy creates us. This energy lies inside of us. 90% of your DNA is not junk DNA. It's quantum energy. It's God. You were made in His image. The wise man says it's up to you to solve this riddle. Can you experience God while you are alive? When I was young, I asked this question to my minister. He said, no, <coughs> only when you die can you experience God. I didn't believe him. Somehow, I knew the human body was built for this experience. It was hardwired. I knew that the light of God existed with him. I read, <coughs> Many of the world's greatest scriptures, and they all said, A great light exists within. If thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. This is not a metaphor or a theory. This is truth spoken by all the great masters. Only you could open this door with your intent. You have free choice. You can solve this riddle. Your life won't be the same. I respect all religions. They are all talking about the same thing. They have different points of view. I think that is grand. Different stories from different times and places. 
They all believe in one Creator. God is not a Christian. God is not a Jew. God is not a Muslim. God is not a Buddhist. God is beyond all the projections we give Him. God is quantum. We are linear. We go from point A to point B. God exists in the entire universe, beyond time and space. Love makes the universe go around. Discover your true essence. You were built and designed to discover your creator within. You can solve this puzzle. Can you experience God while you are alive? When I was young, I asked this question to my minister. He said, no, <clears throat> only when you die can you experience God. I didn't believe him. Somehow, I knew the human body was built for this experience. It was hardwired. I knew that the light of God existed with him. I read <clears throat> many of the world's greatest scriptures, and they all said, a great light exists within if thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. This is not a metaphor or a theory. This is truth spoken by all the great masters. Only you can open this door with your intent. You have free choice. You can solve this riddle. Your life won't be the same. Is life like a cosmic merry-go-round? Everything is spinning. Look at the Earth and the planets <coughs> spinning around the sun. Look at the spinning galaxies. To me, it looks like a cosmic merry-go-round. Everything is in sync and in motion. Nothing ever stops. It's constantly in motion. Yet at times, we are oblivious to this. We are driving in our cars with our cell phones. Did you know the Mayans had a calendar where the cycle was 24,000 years? What a ride to that must be. We are proud to have a calendar based upon the Earth traveling around the sun for one year. I bought a calendar that lasts 24,000 years. Where do they get that kind of knowledge? They didn't have any kind of modern day instruments. To be honest, I'm loving seeing that silence, science and religion is slowly melting into each other. Both the scientists and the mystic have their own laboratories. The mystic has one within and the scientist is external. Both of them are doing research. Both of them are gaining wisdom. The scientist may say, what does the mystic know? The mystic will simply smile. There is nothing to prove. The truth needs no convincing. I'm looking forward to the day where scientists are mystics. When that happens, I think that's when things really will be interesting. When man embraces peace, many incredible inventions will come out. These inventions can't come to Earth if man is still born with each other. The mystics are discovering the field, which is quantum energy, which ties the entire universe together. A human being can connect to the field. Mystics have known this for thousands of years. Ponder this over. 
discover the merry-go-round of life inside of you. The Wheel of Life Is life a cosmic wheel? The wheel turns and turns for eternity. We come and go. Civilizations come and go. Universes come and go. This is the Wheel of Life. Nothing is constant. <coughs> Everything changes. Nothing will remain the same. Someday the earth will no longer exist. I'm not being morbid. I'm just saying the facts. Everything in the universe comes and goes. Even the universe will disappear in a blink of an eye. Yet you are eternal. You were never created nor will you ever be destroyed. Yes, your body will die, but you will never die. There is a part of you that is eternal. You may ask, that's incredible. If that's true, why don't I know it? Because you're looking in the wrong place. You're driving in your car with your cell phone in your hand. You think that reality exists only external. You are the universe. You just don't know it. You have been looking in the wrong place. The journey exists inside of you. This is the greatest game of hide and seek. God hides inside of you. Yet you are looking all over and never can find it. You have free will. You can learn how to take baby steps to discover your true nature. All the great masters have said the same thing. They may use different words. Christ said the kingdom of heaven lies within. This is not some metaphor. Ponder this over. You can solve this mystery. The wheel of life is turning. Discover your true nature.
did the master become the master? Do you think the master was born that way? The master became the master by a lot of work. Nobody gets a free ride. A master makes mistakes along the way. He makes thousands of mistakes along the way. Yet, over time, he learns from his mistakes. He learns what buttons people push that are his weak links. Over time, there are no buttons to push. He will just smile and listen to you. He has nothing to prove. A master loves to meditate, not only sitting in meditation. A master learns to be in constant state of meditation. Walking around is fun. There is no boredom. There is a love of this journey of life. This journey is eternal. The master knows this and so can you. In India, there is a saying, tell me who you keep company with and I will tell you who you are. If you keep company with the Mafia, you will probably be a member of the Mafia. If all your friends use drugs, most likely you will too. If all your friends like rap music, you will probably like it. You are the company that you keep. Here's some good advice. Why not be a, a friend of your higher self? You are the sun, moon, and stars. You are never alone. Your best friend is God. He lives inside of your heart. You are one and the same. Remember, you are the company that you keep. You have free choice to make. I would consider this offer. Everything you learn in life, you must practice. A baby learns how to walk. It stumbles and falls. The baby gets frustrated. Yet in time, the baby learns to walk. It even learns how to run and leap through the air. Everything in life, you must practice. Many people come up to me and say, I can't meditate. It's too hard. My mind is constantly chattering. To learn how to meditate takes time and effort. You learn how to walk. You can learn how to meditate. You can learn how to be, how to be a master. Remember, practice is the key. Here's the dilemma. The universe is linear, or so it seems. We can travel in a linear fashion, Earth to the moon. Everything we do is linear. We think that God is in heaven, sitting on a throne. We think that angels have wings. Yet, what if God is a multi-dimensional energy? Scientists can only see 3D. God is beyond 3D. This creation is 3D, yet the Creator is beyond 3D. Your true self exists in both 3D and beyond. This is a great mystery. This is a great dilemma. How can something that is 3D find God that is 3D and beyond? This is the true game of life. Find out who you truly are. For the majority of mankind, silence can be deafening. 
All they can hear is the chattering of the mind. Silence can make some people go crazy. Yet silence is divine. How can it be so? For one person, it's medicine to the soul. To another, it drives them crazy. What is the difference? When a person begins to learn about silence, he is training himself. Maybe he has heard about signposts along the way. He sees the rambling the mind and makes friends with it. Are you friends with your mind? That is highly recommended on this journey of life. Make friends with your mind. Be kind. There is a point where you will love silence. The entire universe is alive. You are made of the same stuff as the universe. Wow, isn't that exciting? You are stardust. You came from the universe. In fact, you are the universe. Isn't that exciting? The great masters of old talked about your great essence. We thought they were fairy tales. We thought they were just stories. Today, we send satellites out to the unknown in space. The more we learn, the more we can see. Our knowledge is a grain of sand. The modern day mystic goes within. The modern day scientist more is the universe. Both are leading mankind for the search of the unknown. Did you know that all matter on earth came from beyond? Just stop and think for a moment. What a glorious world we live in. Signpost of God is all around us. Yet, we are driving in our cars with our cell phones in our hands. What do you see? In this condition, we are lucky to see even the road. I once was told that if God ever did come back, most people wouldn't be away. Imagine heaven can be all around you, yet you are not aware conscious of it. You see, conscious and awareness is the key to life. And that's why I say the spiritual path is the most practical path. In each and every moment, you must be aware and conscious. The more you are aware and conscious, the more you have gratitude. This is an endless journey. You can never clap your hands and say that I'm totally aware. The journey of life is eternal. You were never created. You will never die. Your body will. I find this fascinating. Just think, you are made up of the same stuff as the universe. Honor is over.